In this video, guys, we're gonna look at shorting strong stocks. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey guys, well, welcome to you. All right, so shorting strong stocks. For many of you watching this, that should may almost cause physical pain. You're like, oh, shorting strong stocks, ouch, I've been there before, and that's not a pleasant place to be, and quite right. You know, actually, you know, aligning yourself with the broader trend is a much easier way uh, to trade. You know, that's something, especially in you know, current conditions, I mean, it depends when you're watching this, of course, but current conditions, we've just got a big bid on new tech, um, and you know, by shorting some of the stronger stocks in tech, it's just ripping people's faces off, which is good for us if we're on the other side of it. If you're buying pullbacks, if you're buying strength, if you're buying a short-term weakness in strong names, um, that's working. And that kind of historically, it's seasonal and it's cyclical. You know, sometimes that's gonna happen for a long period of time, sometimes it happens short, but that, historically that's not a bad kind of always go-to strategy uh, to employ. When you see strength, it's just relentless strength and sometimes it doesn't got any sense to it, that's the time to just join the strength and ride the wave. But be cautious still, you know, not kind of piling in and putting everything on and hoping that it goes up forever, but still using good price action methodology, good structure, uh, good entries, good triggers, good filters and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's a good bread and butter uh, a kind of strategy that, that works uh, works well. However, shorting strong stocks, should it, is it something that you should uh, do at all? Now, this is, a, this is a kind of, you know what, it's, it's like a Marmite topic this. Some people are very good at waiting for the end of a move and using an exhaustion type entry to short the top. Others won't touch it with a barge pole and prefer to just stay with the trend and ride it like that. Now, I like to be a little bit of a, somewhere in the middle, and not necessarily shorting stocks. I'll tend to use this kind of thing, which we'll go through in a moment, to exit my trade and look for a re-entry long, as opposed to being an aggressive shorter. However, you know, I know traders who literally will wait, and they'll sit on the sidelines, and yes, they might wait and wait and wait, and then they'll wait for a specific move to short a strong stock. So, I know that some of you are really interested in doing that kind of stuff, so let me give you some ideas that I think if you're going to do it, how you can really kind of stay safe and you know really try and pinpoint your entry. Now, I wanna say that I think that this is something that really should be way down the list of things to try to master. You know, shorting strong stocks really is, you know, you're trying to step in front of a train, it can be profitable, you can get those quick profits if you time it right, but timing it is challenging, guys. You've gotta be very, very careful what you're doing. You've gotta be a good tape reader, you've gotta be, you know, very, very um, good at risk management and cutting your losses and waiting and waiting and then hitting it, very good at pressing it. So there's lots of things that have to come into play. It's far easier when the wind's behind you, because you can make mistakes, guys. Listen, some of my entries, and I've covered some of the, the trades that I've done uh, recently. They'll be up, uh, if, if not up already, they'll be coming up. Um, you know, where my entries haven't been that great, but literally the, the kind of wave of the tide lifting up has helped uh, just with the entry and just giving you profit uh, regardless, even if you're not quite good with the entry. Some of them have been spot on, some of them perfect, but sometimes you get it quite wrong. You, you kind of get out of jail free card with the weight behind you. Okay, talking about shorting strong stocks. So shorting strong stocks, or even strong markets in general, but strong stocks is a little bit of a better way to approach it, is that, okay, you now waiting for the strength to just become so relentless. What you don't want is what I call um, persistency of trend. You don't want to be shorting into that. If it's chugging and chugging and it's got a kind of really strong trend, but it's not going parabolic yet, you don't want to step in front of that because those things can carry on for ages. What you do want to look out for is something that really starts to accelerate towards the end. So, you know, you've got your, if we kind of take some of this off, so we've got some more room to play with here. If you've got this, you know, nice solid uptrend and then it really starts to kind of rip to highs and there's no real catalyst, that's the point it might come into your radar. Okay, that's the point you might go, you know what, moving averages here or whatever kind of mean you're using, we've had an uptrend, uh, sometimes it'll break out of a kind of up channel like that, it's really starting to rip off the highs, we're getting long stretch candles, really solid candles, we're getting good volume, okay, this feels like a bit of a blow off top and this might be an opportunity to short after the last of the buyers are there. Now, 
This is a reasonable trade setup, it's, it, it's good. And like I say, you've got to be very careful about how you're doing it and managing your risk. But when you start to see this explosive move, you definitely, if you're long, for me, if I'm long and I see this kind of thing, I'm exiting into it all day, every day. And very often it means I'm leaving some on the table, there's four or five day move left, fine. But for me, when I see this kind of explosion in uh, strength and a real kind of push to highs, I think great, that's a nice uh, time to exit. So when you start to see that, well, the, the main golden rule is don't just, don't just step in front of it. You need some kind of trigger. So this might be your filter and you go, okay, there's my filter. Uh, now we've seen a real acceleration of trend, a real kind of drive higher. I'm gonna put it on my alert list. Now, you must have a point, in my opinion, again, you know, my video is all kind of my opinion, guys. You must have a point where you can say, right, this is the risk on the deal. This is the point where I'm gonna come out. The trouble is when you're selling into fresh highs, you don't know, you're like, ah, I'll stay with it. It's gonna go a little bit higher, I'll hold on, I'll hold on, and you end up getting squeezed out, and you're the one that's adding fuel to the fire. If you're shorting these stocks that have gone parabolic, you're waiting for some kind of reverse signal intraday after the next day something like that so something like an outside bar outside day something like that or bearish engulfing should I say or something like uh, a double top so you've come up you've retested you've come lower the reason you're looking for something like that after you've seen that parabolic move and that real kind of push is that You've waited, you've waited, you've waited. You don't know how long it's going to go for. Guys, that, those can just go rip, 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 especially if there's a lot of shorts in as well who are getting their heads uh, taken clean off by this move. You need to wait, 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 wait. And then when you see that, the good thing about this, of course, is that you can frame your risk. And I'm a big advocate, guys, for taking any trade, regardless of what it is, as long as you can frame the risk in a quantifiable way. So something like that bearish engulfing, you know exactly where your stop's gonna be, it's gonna be above that high. Something like the double top, you know exactly where your stop's gonna be, it's gonna be there. Whenever you've got a candlestick reversal type pattern, and guys, I've done videos on that, if you wanna go and check out other people, you know there's plenty of stuff out there, Google, my videos, uh, et cetera. Anything that is a reversal pattern after you've seen this, is can be worth a go because the risk reward ratio is high. Now, I forget which one it is. I'm talking about the risk reward ratio versus the probability of success, how we're trying to massage those both higher. This kind of really gives you a good risk reward ratio because you go, I'm risking this, but ultimately, just to come back to a mean. I could be looking at a four to one, five to one risk reward ratio. And that's not even, we're not even looking for a full reversal. And by the way, that's the other thing, guys. The final thing is we're not looking to try and get the top of the trend forever. We're trying to say, hey, is there a mean reversion play here? Can I trade something that's so stretched so far? I've waited for it. Now I've got some kind of sign that there are some sellers here. Yes, there are some sellers. Can I quantify the risk somehow by putting a stop loss in a sensible position? Yes. Right, where's my target? Let's not get greedy. Let's just look for it to come back to tag a moving average to tag a mean to test some support from prior moves or whatever we're not looking for full reversal here we're not looking for this thing to go back and undo everything it's done over the past six months we're just looking for that little sweet spot and if we can time it right if we can frame the trade right, we can stack all these things together and we can make it into a reasonable strategy. Like I say, we've got to be very careful with it. We've got to be very mindful, not too early, not too early. That's the biggest nemesis of this trade, guys, hitting it too early, you know, because you're then part of the fuel for the fire. You've got to wait, 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 always go further than you expect these things and then look for it on the back side of the move. Look for some kind of trigger. Don't be the first person to jump the gun on this. It's okay, it's, if, ironically, it's okay when you're buying it to be the first person because you kind of want that because you've got the wind behind you. Whereas this scenario, in my opinion, I prefer to wait and see that some sellers are committing first, see that they've stopped this train, they've pushed it back. Right, now I've got a level to work off. Now I can start to press a few shorts. Now I can start to see if we crumble a little bit and move back to a mean. Again, I'm looking for home runs here, but this is not a bad little setup if you can time it right. All right, guys, that's shorting strong stocks. Stay safe out there, keep your risk managed. I'll see you in the next one, bye-bye.